Hello and welcome to another video of this machine learning do-it-yourself tutorials. In the last couple of videos, we talked about a priori algorithm and understanding of what it really means. In this video, we're going to implement that in R. So let's get started. Let's understand the data. This is orderdetails.xls file, which is, which is going to be available in the Google Drive link mentioned in the description, description section of this video. So this is the data, which starts with sales order ID detail. This is header, this is line, product ID, customer ID, and so on and so forth. But we are interested in product ID and sales order ID. We are interested in to understand what products are bought together in a transaction. If you look at this, 43659 transactions, it has so many line items with so many products. 660, 43660 has two product, 762 and 758. So what we want to do is we want to find out what products are bought frequently together. This is also called as market basket analysis using a priori algorithm. So remember that for a priori algorithm, we wanted to have the data in one single line with comma between products. So I would, I would like to have 712 comma 776 comma 711 comma 709 and so on and so forth with so many number of products separated by comma in one single transaction and we need to prepare this data to be ready for a priori algorithms. So let's see how to do that. We are going to go to our studio and load this data set. We load the data. Please note that we are interested in the first and the third column, the first and the third column only, and we are not going to load all the other columns. Let's take a look at order data. So it's sales order ID and product ID. Let's sort the data based on order ID, sales order ID. We want to make sure that the data for sales order ID is numeric. We need a package PLYR in order to do the data transformation as required. Please note that I already have this package in my R Studio uh, on the R installed, but if you don't, you have to run this install packages and then load the library. Next, in order to massage the data, we would use this function. Orders prod list ddplly order sorted data based on sales order ID, function df1 paste, and this is going to collapse based on sales order ID separated by comma all the products as we discussed earlier. At this point in time, we do not need the sales order ID. Let's look at the prod list. We have to run this. You can see that the first transaction is looking at all the products separate by comma and so on and so forth. Let's get rid of sales order ID because we don't need it in a priori algorithm. Now we have products 
separated by commas for each transaction. Let's rename the column product list. Now let's write this out to a file and see how it looks like. Look at that. This is how it looks for the each transaction, all the products listed. Let's apply the a priori algorithm. In order to do that, we would need a package or a library to be installed. Please note that I already have a rules library installed. If you don't install it using the command install.packages, I am loading the library a rules, which has already been loaded now. Now let's read that CSV file so that we'll get the products all next to each other. Transaction read file, remove duplicates and format it. So there are 14,475 records with 267 different Columns. Please note that this 267 means the number of products we have it in the list. Because the product has the quotes, we are going to remove the quotes from the labels. All right, so let's look at the top 10 or top 20 products the frequency. So this is item frequency plot TXN transaction top 10. Top 10. And these are top 10 products. 712, 870, so on and so forth. If you want to find out top 20, it's simple. These are 20 products which are top 20 products. Let's apply the a priori rule. So a priori transaction parameters. This is support. Support should minimum be 0.02 and confidence should be minimum 0.5, which is 50%. And we are going to use target equal to rules. So in order to understand the basket rules, we have to use inspect command, inspect basket rules. And it gave us more than 166 records displayed with 1463 rows in total. And let's take a look at it. What does inspect do? Inspect shows us support, confidence, and lift. And you can see it's all random lift, 9.2, 8.8, 3.4, we want to take a look at those transactions which have lift or sorted by lift. So we start from descending higher lift first, followed by, you know, it's a dis in the descending order. So we want to take a look at first 20 lifts. We are going to use the sort. So sort basket rules by lift first 20. Look at the lift here, 40.27, 39.51, and so forth, which with a confidence level of 97%. So we want to target these rules, and these are the products: 707, 852, with 856. These are bought frequently. 707, 854, with 856, are bought very frequently, and so on and so forth. 
will see what are the products bought very frequently and not just one or two but three or some cases five as well. Now let's plot this these rules. Please load the rules with library if you don't have it install it. Let's plot the bar basket rules. And this is the plot for basket rules. And it shows that these are the top high lift. But this is this plotting, the shading is based on the lift. Higher the lift, darker the shade. These are the high lift areas. Let's do one more plot. This is method equal to grouped and a equals to 5. So only the top rules, the five rules, and this is your RHS. As I mentioned, 760, 762 with 856 are brought together, and so on and so forth. This is how you can apply a priori algorithm to understand which products are brought together. Time for some hands on. So go to the link available here, kegel.com, and download the Titanic passenger dataset. Apply a priori algorithm to predict the survival of Titanic press passengers based on their demographics. Thank you for watching.